Well, I don't do anything for my calves. That's a lie. And I've never done anything for my calves. <gasps> I actually didn't think that they had any size to speak of. Everybody's been asking about them. <laughs> Until uh, the videos came out and people were asking about them. Um, I guess you could say it's going to be genetics. I have an Uncle Brian who has some huge calves for no reason that we've always always talked about in our childhood and kind of laughed about. But uh, I guess that comes from that. But, I mean, people keep talking about how to gain size on their calves, but I don't think that it's through doing calf raises. I think if you add 50 pounds to your squat, 50 pounds to your deadlift, and try and add 10 pounds of body weight, then you're going to add size to your calves. Wow, that is a long, that is a long question, but we are going to answer it because it's... Don't don't read the answers. <laughs> so uh, the next question is pretty long, but it's asked by a fellow member of Forest Fitness who you may have seen in videos, Alistair. And what he says is, first of all, Jeremy, I love you. But also, what changes have you made to the way you train now versus how you trained when you started out that have contributed the most to your improvement? So frequency, exercise selection, volume, whatever, bro. Well, Alistair. <laughs> Hi. Hi. You could have just asked me to my face. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh. Now we're going to answer it. Awkward as shit. <laughs> well, anyway, I think when I started out, you end up reading all these articles about West Side Barbell and you have to hit 90% on your lifts every time for a max effort and then you do a speed day, blah, blah, blah. And you get stuck doing that because you see a, a good jump in your strength when you first start hitting 90% and over. But that quickly fizzles out after about four or five weeks usually because uh, 90% is not enough volume. You end up working up to 90% and you hit it for let's say a double and then you're done for that day. And what did you do? Two reps basically, which is just not enough volume. So I slowly figured out what the other lifters were doing back before all this gear came out. Jeremy, what's the gear? Uh, powerlifting gear that assists your lifts and they did a lot of just uh, basic linear periodization and uh, did a lot more volume and brought up weak points. So I think what uh, I changed the most was I brought the percentages down and focused a lot more on building volume and building strength slowly over a longer period of time. Uh, I also learned to assess myself better and pick out my weaknesses and implement plans to increase those weaknesses into strengths. So I guess that's the main points that I did. What advice would you offer those that want to deadlift some heavy ass shit? People have routinely commented on the fact that you look fierce, you look ferocious. When you deadlift, you have the fierce eyes. No, the speed of the the speed of the actual movement is incredibly fast when you deadlift. The so fast. the speed is fast. It is quite fast. It's so fast it's blinding. Jeremy, what sort of advice would you offer in terms of the deadlift itself? Because it is probably one of uh, people are admiring a lot of lifts, but the deadlift in particular seems to get a lot of comments. Well. You can't go into a deadlift and test the weight. There's no eccentric. You have to get a, a bar that's basically just dead sitting there moving, and you have to get it moving quick, so you have to be super aggressive. I've heard the term, you have to attack the bar like you're pulling the head off of a lion, and I, I kind of go at it in that way. There's uh, no testing. You have to just rip into it. And as far as increasing your deadlift speed, I think that's just a product of strength. If you can make a heavy lift into a low percentage, so for instance, you take your a 400 pound deadlift into a 600 pound deadlift, 400 pounds is gonna move pretty damn fast when you gain that strength. So you have to assess your weaknesses and build the lift through attacking your weaknesses. Hey Jeremy, in terms of uh, the importance of mental discipline and focus, 
how important would you say that is for you, the idea of staying focused, being on point, being there when you lift, and dedicating yourself 100%? Would you say that's an important aspect of lifting or is it more about your programming, your nutrition? How important is that mental game for you? Well, I think they go hand in hand and I think that they're both very important, but I don't think you can make someone have discipline and determination. I think that comes from within. You either have it or you don't. You either really want to push to be stronger or push the potential for human strength or you don't combination of all those things i think uh lifting like a heavy weight over your head is like completely dominating a weight and i think it's pretty cool to do when you if you can hit a big pr with it i think as far as lifts go like a deadlift and a overhead press are the two most like primal movements that i'd say people have probably done since the beginning of time to test their strength i also think that strong shoulders uh, is good for the bench so that's pretty much why I do it but on top of that I th I would say I like military pressing more than bench pressing but bench pressing is a power lift so I have to train it but I feel like I could military press every single day and be fine and just get stronger whereas bench press too much bench pressing and I'll uh, get injured <laughs> Yeah, a great time, guys. I would uh, I would like to do another meet, but just like I said, there there's not many around, and there's not many big ones around. But if the opportunity comes and there's a big one with a lot of good lifters lifting at, then I would definitely go, and I think I could handle a second meet a year, and I would like to because then it just gives me more opportunities to set a PR. Well, ultimately, I have the goal of totaling twenty one hundred at two twenty in a belt only and I think I'm quite capable of it I just think it's a matter of time and not getting injured and training safe and just keep uh, head down and keep moving forward I think I'll be a 220 for the rest of my training life and at 32 I've got my ass beat by 50 year olds before so I know I still have a lot of time left in the game so ultimately I want to get the top total and put it high enough that it can stay there for a long time.